All right, good morning and good afternoon to some of you. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Today we're going to be overviewing and demoing our newly launched, launched commercial integration, energy storage integration with Tesla. We're really excited to be joined by the Tesla team as our commercial integration is now live on the energy tool based platform for our users. Before we get started, I do want to acknowledge uh, the PG&E shutoffs that are currently in effect in several counties in Northern California. So we do realize that many of our registrants might not have been able to make it today. So we are gonna be sending out this webinar recording to everybody who registered after the webinar. And if you do have additional questions throughout, please chat them into the chat box and we will all be getting to them at the end. So again, we'd like to thank the Tesla team for co-hosting this webinar with us. We have Sihi Zhang, the product manager for energy industrial products, and Stephen Pollock, head of channel sales for Tesla Energy Products Americas, on with us from the Tesla side. And we also do have Adam Gerza from the energy tool base team as well. So without further ado, I'm going to pass things off to Stephen from the Tesla team to get this webinar started. So welcome, my name is uh, Stephen Pollock. Uh, I manage channel sales for the Americas, including residential, commercial, and aggregation, also military, housing, and new homes. Uh, very excited to be part of this launch. From Tesla's perspective, this is another step in the direction of our mission to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. Explicitly or implicitly, many of you share this mission, and we appreciate you spending time with us today. I'll spend a little bit of time on the Tesla overview and mission, then CE will dive deeper into the technology. Uh, as many of you know, Tesla, Tesla is not just an electric vehicle company. We are a clean energy company with serious and ambitious goals. In working with Energy Toolbase, we aim to make a more simple, streamlined, and scalable approach for our partners to bring clean energy solutions to market. So as you can see from the sectors listed above, our solutions focus on many different areas and even subsectors below these. For example, we have solutions that serve existing and new homes markets, island nations, areas prone to natural disasters, uh, remote communities, urban communities, and even suburban uh, environments. From the slide above, this is how we typically think of the world and, and, and we think of many of our channel partners do as well, but we see a lot of very specific applications within these sectors themselves residential, commercial, utility, and microgrids. So as you can see from this map, uh, and before we delve deeper into the products, we look at those four sectors above and we can see where our current deployments are. Um, this is really what gets us excited uh, in working with our partners. This is the, the current impact of Tesla energy products across the world. Uh, today, we have over two and a half gigawatt hours of Tesla batteries operating in the field. We have over 3.5 gigawatts of solar operating across 40 countries globally. And this number continues to grow rapidly. We are clearly one of the most experienced advanced energy storage providers in the world and are looking for best in class partners to work with to continue to offer these solutions to market. You can see from the Tesla product ecosystem as we dive deeper into these products, these products are all aligned with our mission. How do we drive sustainability and, and clean energy into the market. Our products generate, consume, and store clean energy. Our vehicle lineup has expanded to include sedans, SUVs, semi-trucks, and soon to be revealed pickup trucks. To enable widespread adoption of these vehicles, Tesla has also developed incredible charging technology and infrastructure at the supercharging level down to the home charging level. And most relevant to this group, a product suite that crosses solar panels, traditional and solar glass, as well as Powerwall, Powerpack, and Megapack, which cover our residential, light commercial, commercial, and utility scale applications. Importantly, these batteries aren't inherently intelligent. So we've also created multiple software products and platforms to help us deliver value to customers. And CE will dive a little bit deeper into some of those platforms and products. Um, Tesla provides a truly integrated storage solution. As you can see across the Powerwall, Powerpack, Megapack, software and services, these solutions encompass hardware, software and service for all of our customers. 
As a result, a result of our integrated ecosystem, our hardware and software products are developed, uh, developed and extensively tested for every release. So what you're bringing to market is truly a reliable product. You might ask, what makes Tesla different? There are a lot of battery companies out there. I think the answer is our unmatched experience and expertise in battery technology from cells, modules, systems, integration, software controls, thermal management, and safety. Tesla has been building integrated battery systems in cars for over a decade. We have a tremendous amount of power electronics in the field operating in harsh environments, which helps us develop products that are truly reliable for stationary storage and energy applications. The same degree of expertise, quality control, and technological innovation has informed our processes for developing high performance energy systems. We start from the cell level and walk through the integration of our products into the end products themselves. And this is a, a nice visual we like to uh, show our customers as well to explain that. Uh, and now I'll hand it over to C. Zhang to get more into the uh, technology in Opticaster. Thank you, Stephen. Hi, my name is CE. I am a product manager at Tesla Energy for industrial products. Today, I wanted to take the time to introduce Opticaster, which is Tesla's intelligent control software for distributed energy resources. So we started developing Opticaster since the start of Tesla Energy, and it has been the fundamental machine learning engine that powers all Tesla Energy products. And as the name suggests, it forecasts and optimizes the site load in real time to maximize economic benefits and sustainability objectives of our end customers. There are a lot of companies out there that stack their own software on Tesla hardware, but I would say no one else operates Tesla products better than Tesla ourselves. We have insights way beyond a limited set of telemetry data through customer-facing API. We have deep knowledge and insights to cell-level signals and real-time low-level BMS logics that take software operation to the next level. Our dedicated team of machine learning experts is constantly improving our forecast accuracy and developing co-optimization algorithms that elegantly address a variety of use case lists here. As you can see from the chart in the middle, we not only just save you money on utility bills, but also interact with the grid to participate in demand response programs, doing system level peak shaving, and many other ancillary services whenever possible. Tesla knows, Tesla knows best that intelligent control is not just about the cutting edge AI. Um, it's actually about the whole supporting infrastructure around it. Um, our in, unique cloud plus local architecture enables highly efficient edge computing, which means high availability and fast response of autonomous control, regardless of cellular connectivity. And the results really speak for itself. To date, Opticaster has accumulated over 100 million hours of operational experience with all types of energy assets, building profiles, utility rates, and market rules. We're delivering over tens of millions in value creation across thousands of sites across the globe. And today, we're very excited to announce that Opticaster rate optimization service will be provided at no additional cost. In other words, your customers can receive every single penny of their demand and TOU savings free of charge. We really wanted you to know that when you purchase our system, it's not just about the equipment you're buying, but the entire Tesla energy solution and the Tesla team that will support you throughout your project life cycle. So I wanna take you all to an example of a power pack site operated by Opticaster. So at Tesla, uh, for every single deployment, we're constantly running simulations to automatically analyze performance and update site-specific improvement strategies over time. So as shown in this uh, net load profile post storage post VE in the upper graph, Opticaster diligently performs peak shaving, energy shifting, and self-consumption. And I wanted to highlight that actual field battery dispatch power, which is highlighted in blue, follows almost exactly with the most optimal simulated schedule in orange. So in, this, in the past, providing this level of accuracy and granularity to our customers is achievable, but very time consuming. After extensive simulations and benchmarking with energy tool-based algorithms, we're now able to instantly generate Tesla validate savings on energy tool-based that closely match Opticaster actual field performance. 
We hope with this new Tesla Energy Tool-Based Simulation Portal, you can better understand the benefits of OptiCaster and our entire suite of integrated energy solutions. So to wrap up our presentation, I wanted to show you a study on a school in Australia that uses PowerPack and OptiCaster software. I think the video uh, really explains why we always strive to provide the very best energy products in the market. We want our children to live in a future of blue sky and clean energy. Rockhampton is ever growing. We're always trying to lead where we can. The motivation for us with installing the Tesla power pack was to create an efficient way for us to harness the energy produced by the sun and use that at night time. The Tesla power pack has definitely exceeded expectations. Based on the capabilities of the Tesla power pack, we're expecting about a 50% saving over 12 months with a payback for the project within six years. There definitely is a lot of interest now that we've put the system in. I think it definitely does impress upon our students with showing a good stewardship, respecting the environment and its resources. And that's something we're very proud of. So we really hope you to join us to continue building one of the largest distributed energy network on the planet. And once you become a partner, you will see immediate tangible economic benefits to your organization and your customers. Most importantly, your contribution will bring a bright, sustainable future that benefits multiple generations to come. Thank you very much. I'll pass it to Adam. Tracy, uh, or maybe you can give me a confirmation. I look good on my side. Hi, everyone. This is Adam Gerzel with Energy Toolbase. Uh, Tracy already said this at the top. Uh, but I want to reiterate, I can, I can tell you on the energy tool base side, we're really, truly excited to have launched this integration with the Tesla commercial storage team. Uh, we've been working with them behind the scenes for quite some time to make this happen. Uh, and as Sihi had just mentioned, we've certainly done a lot of validation and benchmarking work so that the simulations we're running, and we're going to look at very shortly here, are really representative of how OptiCaster would perform in the field uh, for various types of applications. So with that, most of my segment of the webinar today is really gonna be focused on looking at a couple of different case studies. And I hope in the process we'll really you know, demo how the integration works and how to get value by using this. Okay, cool, so hopefully you're seeing my screen where I've got the resource guide up. I want to give this a quick plug. Uh, this is right in the newsroom section of our website under resource guides. We did produce a uh, resource guide that really outlines a lot of the stuff we're going to be covering on the webinar now. Um, so use this as a resource. Um, certainly kind of tells a lot of tips and tricks on how to use this and get best uh, value from it. I'd probably even really quickly single out that last page. Um, maybe at least go and give that a read when you get a chance. It's just a final checklist of items as you're developing projects and using the Tesla commercial integration, um, some kind of considerations to keep in mind to really make sure you're framing these projects in the best way possible. Okay, cool. Uh, let me jump on in without any further ado. Um, before I kind of jump into real case studies, uh, in terms of signing up for the Tesla integration, it really works very similar to how we do this uh, with some of our other integration providers. Um, the first time you attempt to access the Tesla logo in step five, you're gonna get that sign up screen notification, which has a little bit of uh, you know, Tesla copy on here and also links to their online lead form. So if you're not currently permissioned uh, or working with Tesla, um, this is kind of the pathway to um, filling that out and getting in touch with one of their um, sales reps that uh, CE can, I think, actually had already mentioned. Okay, cool. So with that out of the way, let us jump into some of the real meat of this and uh, a few case study projects that we set up. So I've got a couple projects in California. Um, I think they're pretty diverse. So this should be um, good for different types of applications. Uh, the one that I'd like to start with 
is a smaller scale commercial project. This is going to be a solar plus storage project in the PG&E territory. And if you've seen me demo in the past, you know, I always like to kind of start here to give a little context for what type of customer and what shape load profile we're looking at. Um, so this is a PG&E office building type load customer. Uh, this is actually real data uh, and very in typical office building fashion. You got the Monday through Friday, um, kind of 7 a.m. to 5 or 6 p.m. shoulder uh, weekends, not a lot of load. And it looks to be pretty consistent that way throughout the year for this uh, first case study run we're looking at. Okay, cool. So let me jump into the edit proposal screen and we'll just kind of give a little bit more context for the deal that we've got set up here. Uh, and then we'll jump into the, uh, the Tesla integration in step five. So we are modeling this one on the B10 rate, the PG&E B10. Um, hopefully all folks in the PG&E territory are, non, are now modeling on the B rates, um, which just went into effect 20 days ago on the 1st of November. And less than a year from today will be the mandatory um, rates that uh, commercial customers are on. Um, again, just kind of giving a little more context for the size of this particular customer. It looks like they're using about 200,000 kilowatt hours annually um, with a peak demand for the year uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 80, 85 kW. Um, so I guess I would, I would kind of classify this as maybe like a small to medium um, office building type customer. Um, some of you are probably really familiar with these seven steps. Um, others of you on this webinar may be seeing some of this for the very first time today. I'll just very quickly move through um, some of this progression. Uh, another real advantage of Energy Toolbase is the fact that we update a really um, in-depth incentive database in addition to our in-house utility rate database. Uh, so step three is really just selecting which incentives um, you want to elect for this particular project. Uh, this is a PG&E commercial project, which is still in step two for SCHIP, which is actually a really lucrative uh, what is it, 40 cents a watt hour with no ITC, 29 cents a watt hour incentive with the ITC. And you'll notice we've got a couple other tax-based incentives that we've selected for the case study run here. On the solar system side, uh, it looks like I went in uh, and I used the PV Watts engine to generate a 100 kW DC rated system. And I'm pricing that at 275 a DC watt, which I think is probably reasonable and maybe even you could argue conservative. Uh, on the solar system side. And just notice for a little bit of context, um, the 100 kW system is about a 70% offset on the solar side. Okay, so here's really what we're trying to get to. And let's jump into step five and run our very first uh, Tesla SIM using OptiCaster. So this is an account that has been permissioned, obviously, to access the integration. Okay, so under the designs, you can see the um, all the most recently uh, made available equipment designs. Uh, actually, just yesterday, working with the Tesla team, we did release 20-year um, warranty versions of the both PowerPack and Megapack products. Uh, I'm going to talk about that in my next case study when we look at a bigger project. Um, for this initial run, I'm actually going to be using Powerwall. Um, I think sometimes there may be a conception that this is just a residential product, but um, you know, based on the direction of the Tesla uh, team, uh, you can absolutely use these in commercial applications as well. I'm going to be running this one with the OptiCaster with the requirement that it charges from PV. And this is actually going to be a really nice opportunity to kind of use the optimizer and just demo that functionality right out of the gate, which I would highly encourage you to do um, as you're stepping into projects for the first time, just to get a view of what the savings differences would be across a range of different system sizes. So I usually like to start kind of down here in the total electric bill savings chart uh, and down there in the X axis, effectively what that represents is one power wall, two power wall, three power wall, and so on. And you can kind of just see the shape of this curve. There is some diminished marginal return as we continue to size up. Uh, in other words, savings does not kind of go up at the same linear rate um, as the, the, the capacity of our uh, uh, number of power walls we're doing here. Um, for this case study, how about I just choose four for this first run? And um, of course, on the system cost side, uh, definitely be mindful of this. This is obviously a number that you're going to be working with your Tesla rep um, to 
to get pricing on. And then of course, this number does generally represent the total turnkey installed cost. So this is a number that we will leave to you, the user, the developer to, to define. Uh, for this run here, why don't I just use a really round number of $1,000 per kilowatt hour installed. Um, and this is 54 kilowatt hours of capacity. So for the initial run here, we'll price that at $54,000 installed. Um, I will maybe make quick mention, actually, let me talk through this screen, then I'll kind of pivot to the, uh, the company settings page. Um, so I think a lot of folks are used to running storage simulations in energy tool base, and oftentimes the, the very first numbers they want to know right away is how much did the storage, did in this case the four power walls save um, for this very specific project, um, which is obviously very specific to the load profile of the customer, the rate schedules we've defined in step two, uh, and in this case, um, the solar system that we've uh, coupled along with it. And we always express that answer right there in dollars per kilowatt hour of storage capacity. So if you want to just kind of quickly put that into dollar terms, it's really simple, $57 per kilowatt hour of storage capacity. We've got 54 kilowatt hours, that, that's the four power walls. So we're saving about $3,100 year one uh, on this particular run. Um, before I jump in and kind of show you the actual simulation, the Opticast, um, you know, mimicked simulation behind the scenes, let me just kind of keep moving through the next two steps, because uh, this is really the natural progression that a lot of folks are doing in their workflow, which is to now tell us the specifics of the transaction you want to use, and then output this into a uh, customer-facing proposal document. So on the transaction side, we do preload a couple of Tesla transaction templates into your account when you're permissioned, when you've been approved to use the uh, Tesla integration. Um, I would say that you're not really required necessarily to use these, but we want to point something out. And the reason that these were created is because it's really important that we want you being mindful and making sure to include an equipment replacement cash flow if that's applicable. Okay, so if you're showing a transaction term, let's say that goes out over some period of years and there is an equipment replacement happening, we really want to make sure that you're showing a corresponding cost because you're going to be recognizing the benefit in the cash flow. So let's talk about that. Uh, the cash flow term uh, on this particular template is a user input, which I actually always like that flow. So let me just kind of for this first run, say 20 years. Uh, and then of course you can define O&M if that's relevant. Maybe I'll just plug in, uh, starting in year 11, $150, um, just to kind of quickly get some numbers into the table. Okay, let's jump into a finished document template and actually look at how that rendered and kind of interpret some of the uh, financials uh, and project economics of that particular run. Um, it's important to note, so it's really cool. Uh, a lot of uh, existing energy tool base users have already spent a lot of time in their account building up their proposal document templates, and you can absolutely use uh, this Tesla commercial integration um, pretty seamlessly with all of the templates that you already have in place. Um, this is one of our legacy templates a lot of folks are used to looking at um, for the solar plus four Powerwall project for this PG&E customer uh, on the B10. Uh, it looks like a pretty attractive payback of uh, about seven years, um, almost 11% um, IRR. Let me jump down to the cash flow because I think a lot of times this is right where a lot of folks go to to kind of interpret what all just happened. Um, so this is maybe a good opportunity for me to again make mention of the equipment replacement. Okay, so the Powerwall product that's been preloaded working with Tesla in Energy Toolbase has a 15 year life. Um, so you can see that replacement happening in year 16. So I guess this goes back to my earlier point that I was trying to make. Uh, if I'm in your shoes and I'm developing this project to, to get a sale, I would be really mindful of how I'm showing and how I'm choosing to show the transaction term. So what I actually did here, I, I don't like, because effectively I'm saying let's replace the power walls and, and swap in four fresh power walls in year 16, but I'm only showing a 20 year transaction term. Um, so very quickly kind of correcting that, and this is really the beauty of energy tool base, just kind of um, changing assumptions on the fly, I think it would probably be more appropriate, let's go out five years and rerun this and show this on a 25 year basis. 
And of course, there's different strategies for this. Uh, I'm certainly not saying do it this way. This is just kind of a um, a tip to to kind of keep in mind if we're doing a replacement at, in this case, year 16. Let's show additional benefit for a few more years. So there you go. I just added out uh, to a 25-year transaction term. Uh, and certainly, if we were looking at this project on like a net present value basis or a 25-year internal rate of return basis, this is more um, strategic, right? Because uh, we're, we're incurring the cost of that replacement. Let's show the additional 10 years of benefit. Um, possibly another strategy that I, we've seen folks use that uh, I think is also viable is you maybe you wanted to choose um, simply a 15-year transaction term where you're not even necessarily showing a replacement cost to your customer in the analysis. Uh, and of course, energy tool base is really good. If you want to show it in multiple ways, we, we can do that as well. Okay, so that's kind of, I think, a quick run through of going through using the integration, um, choosing a transaction, being strategic about your transaction term, and then rendering that into a document. Uh, I do want to make quick mention of this um, addendum uh, that the Tesla folks uh, had sent over. And this is going to be getting added to all of your accounts once you've been permissioned to use, uh, again, the Tesla integration. And this is just a couple pages of static content. Uh, I think there's two versions of this. There's a, uh, a Powerwall for like commercial version, which we're looking at. Uh, and then shortly here, we'll look at the, uh, the Megapack Powerpack um, version. And I believe there was also an update that was made to this. So when this gets dropped into your account, um, you can be assured that it's, it's the very latest version uh, from the folks at Tesla. Um, cool. Maybe I'll just spend like two minutes now and kind of jump into the actual simulation. I know a lot of folks like looking at, well, what actually happened behind the scenes, um, right? We, we've been kind of talking about uh, the fact that our dispatch should be really representative of how uh, Opticaster would operate in the field. Um, let's, let's see it. Let's see what actually happened there. So let me jump down to a maybe summer month. I'll toggle down to like a July, August billing cycle. And let's zoom in on like a week there and just kind of spend about a minute um, interpreting what just happened. Uh, again, we're on the B10 schedule. Um, this is our 100 kW solar PV data, which came in from PV Watts. Uh, and now let's look at the dispatch that Energy Toolbase generated, which again is, is meant to be really uh, representative of the Opticaster operating in the field. Um, this is doing both peak shaving and load shifting, as Sihi mentioned during her segment. Um, it looks like the B10 demand charge, if you see my mouse on bottom, uh, I'm kind of getting a little bit technical here, but it's $12.25 a kW. Um, so that's, um, that's certainly going to get targeted, and we're going to do some peak shaving. Um, the B10 rate also offers a really nice arbitrage opportunity, um, 20 cents, I'm sorry, 27 cents per kilowatt hour on peak, and that's that new four to nine window, um, 17 cents per kilowatt hour off peak. So you can actually see in the dispatch here, we are absolutely doing a good handful of, uh, of time shifting as well, effectively charging the battery entirely from solar um, in the off peak and a little bit of mid peak period, and then discharging back uh, on peak, um, effectively selling back at 27 cents. Um, but making sure we do so such that we're not exporting back to grid. Um, so this is, um, you know, this is absolutely both S-chip and ITC compliant. So that's really what's happening behind the scenes. You're welcome to kind of toggle into any day, into any billing cycle to really get a feel uh, for exactly what, you know, in this case, the Opticaster is, um, is simulating. And that really is how we arrive at um, both, you know, the number of full cycles we've performed, and the savings that were captured. Okay, so that's the that's the solar plus storage run. Let me jump into a standalone storage run, and we're going to be doing this one on a much bigger size system. We're going to be running this off of a um, a mega pack system. So let's kind of shift gears here. We're going to go down to San Diego. Let me start again with um, on the load data side. This is obviously a very large um, customer. Um, you can see actual peak demands, almost approximating 1,000 kilowatt hours in some of those summer months. Let's just take a peek at this load profile. Um, and you can see a little bit different in shape. I actually, this is real data once again. I actually think, uh, I named this large retailer. I actually think this is um, like a large, um, 
um, store that has actually a good amount of cold storage. Like I don't want to say supermarket, but like a large store that's got a lot of always on load. Because I mean, look at that. I mean, literally we have 400 kW um, in the evening always on load. So that's now the, the load profile. We're going to be running the second case study against. Let's jump into our progression here. Um, this is in San Diego, and I am certain every single San Diego developer on the line is very intimately familiar with the ALTOU schedule, which we're going to be modeling on here. On the incentive side, because this is a standalone storage project, we're just going to be taking the S-chip. Um, you know, Energy Toolbase is not a tax advisor, but I believe it's pretty widely understood and known that currently in a standalone storage application, it would not qualify for the tax credit. Um, so the good news here is that on the S-chip, you would actually be getting the higher S-chip value, the non-ITC non value of 35 cents instead of the, uh, the with the ITC value. But obviously, we would be always better off taking both S-chip and tax credit if that was an option. Okay, let's jump into step five and run a Megapack sim. Actually, I thought I had deleted this. Let me um, kind of pretend we're walking into this um, from scratch and kind of just building this up for the first time. So on this particular run, we're going to do, we're going to bring out one of the big ones and we're going to run um, the 1257KW2514 KWH Megapack. Uh, and I'm actually going to be choosing the 20-year warranty option. Okay, so I think I could certainly run an optimizer for the first run here. Let's just do one of those. Uh, on the control setting side, of course, uh, important that we're going to choose the OptiCaster with no charging requirement, obviously, because, um, you know, there is no solar here. On the system cost side, once again, we defer to you, the user, uh, to tell us that value. Um, talking with the Tesla folks for this particular run, I think we were going to price this um, for the demo here at about 450 um, per kilowatt hour installed. So 2514 times 450, about a million one. Actually, why don't I just round up just so I have a nice round number. I think it's not really material to the analysis, um, but we're going to be down in the 450 to let's call it 500 um, per kilowatt hour installed range. Um, one quick thing, I was actually going to mention this earlier. Um, so be mindful. I had this on my other screen. Maybe I can just pop open the company settings here. Um, that suggested price that we brought in gets defined in your company settings. Uh, so let me just show you where that is. It's a little bit hidden. Under your storage settings, you will now have this tab available once you've been approved for the, the Tesla commercial integration. Uh, and I believe this is the product we were just working with, the, uh, the 1257 2514. Um, so clicking into this is where you would be specifying what the um, suggested pricing is. And also the reason I show this, it's really important to also be mindful of um, replacement costs because this is where that would get defined. Um, and when you're using one of those Tesla transaction templates, this is where it's pulling from. Um, so be mindful of, um, I think it's almost maybe less important here because you can overwrite that value in step five. Uh, it certainly is important um, to make sure you define what you believe the replacement cost to be um, in this in this box here, and that all gets managed through uh, your company settings screen. Okay, so jumping back here, um, we performed the simulation again, a storage only mega pack simulation. Um, let's just kind of really quickly put that into dollar terms. I always like to do so. In this case, 56 times 2514, uh, we're saving about 140 thousand dollars on this particular run. Um, why don't this time I actually just go right into the analytics tab uh, and just interpret what happened uh, on this ALTOU schedule. And again, I'm going to toggle down to a summer month. I always like starting in the summer and then kind of backing out from there. So let's look at one month. And let me actually zoom into about a week of data. And again, here's that big box store or big large retailer. And in this case, we're just effectively overlaying the uh, OptiCaster dispatch. Now, this is really interesting here. On the ALTOU in the summer, there's a really high on-peak demand charge. If you see where I'm hovering my mouse right here, the combined on-peak demand charge is $54.88 per kW, okay? Whereas the max non-coincident demand charge, which is still high, um, coming in at $25.63 per kW. But really interesting to see kind of what the dispatch did here. You can really see that 
the strategy and the uh, the Opticaster simulation here is really targeting to shave peak in that four to nine window um, because it's just so much more valuable. Um, when we're performing this simulation, it's really effectively kind of an economic optimization dispatch and it is in our best interest here to really target and shave demand in the, the four to nine um, rather than um, you know, kind of um, prioritizing the non-coincident. It's just worth so much more money. So pretty interesting when you look at this simulation uh, and you can really see for this entire billing cycle um, a lot of the peak shave. Uh, and you can actually see that set point where I'm hovering my mouse right here um, where we're going down to about the light blue number 473 um, is basically the post storage peak demand in the four to nine window. Um, whereas in the non-coincident, we're still up at 857. And again, that's really performed and that's really driven by attempting to optimize for, um, for savings in this case. Okay, let's see how this baked into a final project e economic cash flow, and then I'll be wrapping it up and um, passing it back to Tracy for uh, Q&A with the Tesla folks. Okay, let's do the Tesla um, transaction again. And again, this is kind of picking up on, on my earlier point. Why don't I choose a 20-year term? Remember, I did the 20-year warranty option. Um, and on the O&M side, let's be reasonable and kind of put in some value here. I'm just making this up. How about uh, starting in year 11, $2,500, escalating at a percent. And let's even kind of be, to be fair, throw in a little bit of um, storage O&M. Again, this is entirely on you, the user. I'm sorry, what am I doing? Uh, there is no solar. Whoops. Uh, there is zero solar. So I'm just going to have a, uh, a storage O&M cost. And how about, I don't know, I'm making something up, $1,500 starting in year one, escalating at 1%. Um, and that's just a made up number. Don't lean on that too much. Uh, that's, that's obviously for you to define as the user. Okay, let's jump into a cash flow and interpret what we've got here. I've got a storage only document. Let's go right to the project summary page and quite an attractive project. I think we'd all agree um, coming in at five and a half years on a payback. 16% on a 20-year uh, IRR basis. Let's jump down to the cash flow and kind of interpret what happened. So there's um, our S-chip incentive, which again is going to be really lucrative because um, it's the higher level in step three, not taking the ITC. Um, there's our, call it $141,000, $142,000 of savings um, from, uh, from the mega pack. And again, right, I um, this is the 20-year warranty project um, product, which effectively has a 20-year replacement life. And given that I kind of strategically chose a 20-year transaction term, effectively we're not even showing a, uh, an equipment replacement happening because that would actually happen uh, the following year in year 21. So again, I would um, think this to be a pretty attractive um, project. And this is all very real data on the usage side. Um, certainly on the pricing side, that's something you need to get with Tesla folks on to um, figure out where, where you need to land and your total turnkey installed cost. Uh, but I can also tell you this is on today's SDG&E ALTOU rates. Um, let's just look at one other addendum while we're here. This is the, uh, the other PowerPack Megapack addendum. And again, this will be getting added to your accounts um, pretty soon um, for the approved folks that are um, already using or have access to to use the uh, the integration here. Cool, I think those are all my big points that I wanted to hit on. So Tracy, I will pass it back to you. All right, thanks Adam. Um, we do have quite a few questions coming in. Um, so we wanna get to as many as we can. Um, the first one, a lot of them, we will be directing towards the Tesla team. Um, the first one is, um, is there any additional payment for using OptiCaster? So the answer is no. Um, Tesla offers a truly integrated solution. So OptiCaster is included for utility rate optimization, free of charge for all our commercial installations. All right, um, the next one is, do these Tesla ESS offer, uh, systems offer backup power capabilities? Uh, yes, we do. Um, this is actually one of the most common cases that we deal with all the time and backup is supported across our product lines. 
All right. Adam, I will direct this one at you. Um, in the case study, you modeled PG&E projects with the option B rates, even though those don't become mandatory for another year. Do you suggest that users model with option B rates? Yeah, we're getting a ton of inquiries on that. Actually, Tracy, if you wouldn't mind, throw the um, throw our recent blog up on the screen. Perfect. Um, we're getting a lot of inquiries on this. The B rates uh, just went into effect, what, 20 days ago? Okay, and this is a pretty big, um, you know, sea change here. pg e after about a decade, is moving folks onto these new B schedules. They are voluntary today. So if, let's say, you were to install your, your Mega Pack or your Power Pack within the next 12 months, um, you could grandfather into the existing E rates. Um, so in that instance, yeah, I think it'd be fair to be, to be modeling um, on the E. Um, but, um, you know, we're, we're coaching a lot of folks, given that um, the future we're moving towards is the B rates. And one year from today, uh, November 2020 and beyond, any project you uh, solar and or storage that you're doing will be on the B. So I just say use your judgment. It will depend on the timing. And this blog here, written by our uh, senior rates analyst, Aaron Christensen, is just gold. It's in our newsroom. Check this out. Lots of really great summarized um, rules on those new rates that we've uh, really fact-checked. So I wanted to plug that. Thanks. All right. The next one, um, does Tesla support participation in any grid services programs? Yes, we do. Um, Tesla is actively operating virtual power plants in many parts of the world, including Australia, Massachusetts, and California, with actually quite a field plan out for 2020. So as a user of Opticaster software, you have the opportunity to enroll in grid services participation with Tesla directly. So just talk to your uh, Tesla account manager if you have any questions regarding to our BVP programs. Okay, um, more for the Tesla team. Where can I find the pricing for the Tesla products? Powerwall, PowerPack, Megapack. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, our pricing is not currently available on the energy tool base platform. So uh, you'll be modeling information that you get from your account managers. And that is our <clears throat> recommendation is to work directly with the account managers for that specific project. Okay. And then this is one we had a couple of people ask this. When is the 20 year warranty applicable? Um, the, uh, the 20 year, the standard 20 year warranty for power pack and mega pack is available in North America today in international markets. It should be, it can be requested on a case by case basis. Uh, your account manager can help you with that, but today it is uh, available in North America. All right. Um, are there any guarantees from Tesla concerning the accuracy of predicted and simulated usage patterns? Um, and I'll send that to see and Steven as well. Sure. Um, so for modeling purposes, it's just to understand expected performance. Uh, we do have a, a different types of guarantees, and that's kind of a complicated question. Um, so I, I would suggest that um, if you have a project that requires um, guarantees, that you talk to uh, your Tesla account manager, and we can figure out what the most appropriate and cost-effective guarantees are for that application. All right, great. And I do, I know we're coming towards the top of the hour, but I do want to get this question in. How do we get in touch with the Tesla team to start using this ETB integration? So as Adam mentioned, you can directly apply in the Inside the Energy Toolbase platform and uh, making sure you also submit a form on the Tesla website so that we, our account manager will be reaching out to you. All right, so we are going to end things here. We don't want to go too long, but um, we do want to say thank you again for taking time out of your days to be on today's webinar. We hope that you found this useful. We'd also like to thank again the Tesla team for co-hosting with us. If you have any additional questions uh, that we didn't get to, we will be reaching out privately via email to get those answered. And if you are already an energy tool based user user, you can book time with your account manager to, um, for additional questions as well. And if you're not an ETB user and are interested in using the ETB Tesla integration, you can sign up for a trial on our website and you will have access to it during that trial. So 
once again, thank you all for being on and um, have a great day.